Hi everyone, I hope this finds us all doing really well. We're up to part three in this great test. This test that God puts us through and the test that God allows us to go through. So we know that we are in faith and coming into the reality of becoming Christ-like. Not just saying that we are Christians because that is the goal to life in Christ, to become his bride to become like the groom not gods but people who are able to live and walk in the manner in which Jesus did and so we're up to following God's instructions and that's what we're going to look at in this part and the reason for it which are essential that we lay hold of the life that is for us in him in the part two, we looked at whom do we love, and Abraham was tested whom he loved the most. Was it himself or was it God? And we talked about the mystery being it's so easy to think it's about loving others, but the reality is if you love yourself more than God, you will have others in your heart which are idols. So there's two things that God needs to deal with. And so we looked at that. And we're going to look at the second part of verse 2, which is around the following of God's instructions. It was imperative that Abraham followed the instructions that God gave him. So Genesis 22, 2, he said, Take now your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. And this is this part here. And offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. And we see the word mountains used, not go to Moriah to the mountain, but go to one of the mountains of which I will tell you. And this entire illustration between God, Abraham and Isaac is the exact same illustration and a direct reflection of the father and the Father's ultimate sacrifice of His own Son, Jesus Christ, for our redemption and our reformation. The synergies that we're looking at here are amazing, and we are to comprehend each and every aspect of this truth. So I want to read again that second part of that verse in verse 2. And offer him, Isaac, there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you. God gives Abraham a specific instruction and it is imperative that Abraham is obedient to the specific instruction. This is a test on its own. And it's important to note that there are tests among the tests which we will constantly face in God. And our obedience to what he says is the key to overcoming all things. Whether that's the obedience of just his word operating in us through belief, or whether that's the obedience of his instructions and doing what he asks us to do. He says, offer Isaac up as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you. Why is it essential that Abraham takes Isaac to the specific mountain which God has allocated and tells him of and not any mountain? Because it was this mountain, this specific one mountain, which the ram was going to be on for a sacrifice instead of Isaac. The father had already provided the sacrifice even before they had arrived there. And this is how God operates because everything is finished. God is working to a predestined finished plan. So he'd already provided the sacrifice that was required. The test was to test with to see whether Abraham was going to engage in being obedient to the father. This is why we cannot use any excuses before God and why there are tests to overcome by faith because faith sees what already is. 2 Peter 1, 2 and 3 Grace and peace 
be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Seeing that, listen to this, His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence. Now, it is our obedience to what the Father says that has us entering into this life or not. And this is why it is so critical that we do what the Father says. We must do everything the way He instructs. We must follow exactly what He says without any deviation from His word and voice. To fail to do what God says or to add to what God says and to put our spin on what God says is detrimental to the life that you and I can know. He's given us everything in accordance to His power to life and godliness. So it must be His power that brings us into this life. To do this is to sabotage and put in jeopardy the life that He died for us to experience in Him. It is utter and complete foolishness to be and to live like this. And we see Abraham do exactly as God instructed. Genesis 22, 3-4. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Abraham went to the mountain in amongst the mountains that God had told him. On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. When you and I are tested, do we do exactly what God says? Or do we come up with our own plans, our own thoughts and our own strategies? Do we come up with what we believe is right or what others say is right? Exerting all of our time, our energy and our resource into finding our own solutions? Once again, this is utter foolishness. Abraham did exactly as God said in this test and so must we. Which means we must be able to hear two things. And live in accordance to these two things. We must be able to hear, number one, His word for the formation of His eternal life in us. And the second thing, we must be able to hear His voice for what He calls us to accomplish. In other words, the works that He has predestined us to accomplish before the foundations of the earth. We must be able to spiritually hear those two things. Now, the combination of both of these together is all part of the accomplishment of the Father's will, which is the purpose for His church, to glorify the Father through the accomplishment of His will on earth as it is in heaven, is every one of our purposes in Christ. When we hear in these ways, and do as God instructs, we hit the mark and we get to live a life of the overcomer by faith. We pass the test and in turn get to receive the reward of inheritance that Colossians 3, 23, 24 talks about. Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance. This is not your justified position. This is the reward through sanctification, the kingdom of heaven reward. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. The one who doesn't pass this test, unfortunately, is left empty-handed and although still justified by his blood, relinquishes and forfeits their inheritance in Christ. Colossians 3, 25, following on from 23 and 24. For he who does wrong will receive the consequences of the wrong which he has done, and that without partiality. There is loss for not passing these tests. Not your justified position, 
but your inheritance. And we must come to terms with this and not justify it away. So let's all be found being the ones who receive all that the Father has for us through doing exactly as he says whether it's his word for the formation of life within us or whether it's his voice for the works that he'll call us to accomplish through his divine grace and strength. So questions. Following God's clear instruction is the key to life. Why? Why does the Father always provide for what he asks of us to become and do? Three, what does this tell you about God and his way? Four, why is being able to hear his word for formation and his voice for function so essential to overcoming all the tests God sends our ways and allows? And the final question, where would you say you are at with being obedient to both his word and his voice? Look forward to seeing you soon for part four. Take care.